What's up y'all and welcome back. Today we are down here in Gaussen and like always we're doing a little bit of fishing but I did not bring any bait and I really don't have that many soft plastics so what I do have is my cast net right here. A little bit of tangle in it but we're gonna get that out. And then we're gonna be throwing it in this little slough right here off the beach and we're just trying to catch finger mullet and maybe some little croakers so hopefully we'll be able to get some. I don't remember how big it is but it's the biggest legal size obviously that you can get in Texas. So it's a pretty big cast net. I think it's what eight feet I think that would be. I'm not the best at throwing it. I've watched tons of videos of people showing all these ways to throw them, and I just can't. So I'm gonna throw it just the way I know how. Grab the net, grab it in half, open it up, and then we're just gonna throw it out and see what happens. Give it a little spin. Oh, that wasn't that bad. All right, we've got a ton of bait in here already. So, in this little slew right now, there's a bunch of shad, menhaden, whatever you want to call them. And these are everywhere. They've been hatching, they've been super small, but they're finally getting bigger. So they're still tiny, but some of these big ones might make some good bait. Now I will say I usually don't use these for bait because they die so quickly. Like if you dump them out in the sand, they'll be dead in five or 10 seconds. But we might keep a couple of the big ones. And if anything, we can use them for dead bait because you know, today we're just trying to get a bite, not really going after anything specific. Shoot, I'd be happy hooking into a sand trout. So. We're gonna keep some of these big ones, keep on throwing. What we're really looking for is some finger mullet. So I already caught some in here. As you can see, I've already thrown the net a couple times. There's a finger mullet. These are the smallest of small finger mullet you can get. I mean, look at that. I think these might be the smallest finger mullet I've ever caught. But I guarantee those will get eaten by something. So we're gonna throw the net around, try to catch some more, and then we'll see y'all at the fishing spot. Y'all stay tuned. All right, y'all, so I threw the cast net about seven or eight times and Check it out, got myself a bait well full of finger mullet and well, that's all shad in that one, but I got a bunch of finger mullet too. On the last cast, I think I caught seven or eight in one cast. So you go to a bait shop and try to buy the same finger mullet and they're gonna sell them to you for a dollar each or just about. So get yourself a cast net, you'll end up saving money in the long run. But now let's go ahead and take those finger mullet and see if we can turn them into a bigger fish. So we pulled up to the first spot and the water is super high today, probably about a foot higher than normal. And I told myself I wasn't gonna wade because the water was super high and I didn't at first. I fished from the bank, but I didn't catch anything. So here I am strapping on my wade belt because I just can't help it. The water is looking nice out here and it's a little bit brown right here, but once you get out there, there's a nice blue line where it just turns to a awesome trout grain. So I can't help it guys. I gotta get in the water and wade. Hopefully it's not too deep. Good thing is though, we're not wearing any waders, so if it goes a little above the waist, that's fine. We'll just push through it because I know once I get out there, it will be shallower once I get up next to the oyster. So I'm gonna grab my rod. We're, we're gonna leave the live bait for now. I'll come back and get it later if I'm not catching anything. But right now, I'm just gonna throw lures around for a little while. Hopping over all these rocks, about to hop in the water. This looks like a good spot to me, but hey, I know I can't be the only one that experiences this, so y'all let me know. Does anybody burn like heck whenever they put sunblock on? because man, this stuff is not fun. I sprayed it all over my face. I'm sick of getting sunburned, but I'm on fire right now. And we're in the water. Slide my foot down a rock. Here we go. I don't see it's chalky right here, but it will get good once we get out there. If I can find a way over that rock. Nope, we have to go a different way. All right, let's see if we can find a way in right here. Also, I should note that the spot I'm at right now is very good on an outgoing tide, but the tide is not switched around yet. It's supposed to be outgoing, it's just not yet. Also, I just noticed I don't have my stringer on me and I didn't see it in the back of the truck. So I guess we're playing catch and release today unless a fish gets killed by the hook or unless it's something I want to keep. I can throw it on the fish grips and carry it back. Oh, but I can already tell you, man, I'm already waist deep and usually right here, it's just over your knees. Let's see what happens. Probably gonna be up to the chest trying to get out here. That's all right. Take it easy, take it slow. Don't push it. Safety is more important than catching a fish. I'm out of the way of the rocks now, but man, is it deep here. I'll show you what it looks like. I'm up pretty much to the top of the wade belt. Should get shallower. Just trying to find that little area, but also I forgot to say that it is midday right now. So not the best time to be fishing. 
Not really any tidal movement right now, midday. But, you gotta come when you can sometimes. So we'll see if we can hook anything. anything. Usually out here, uh, this is on the edge of the intercoastal, so if you can't catch any fish up on the flat, up on this little spoil around this oyster, usually you can step out a little bit, cast closer to the edge of that intercoastal, and there's always a couple fish hanging around. Maybe sand trout, but usually a few specks mixed in. So we'll see what happens. So I've walked out and I've made it onto the next to the oyster. There's a fish. Oh, dude, they're out here, guys. I'm getting thumped. I made it next to the oyster. I'm up. I'm just just above my waist now, maybe an inch. So I was up to my chest walking out here, but now I'm just above my waist. And I just made a real long cast out here towards the intercoastal. And I got bit three times on that cast. Probably sand trout, but you never know. Let's see if we can do it again. So I've been out here about, I'd say about 10 minutes. And I've gotten a whole bunch of bites. But guys, I don't know what it is. I don't know if the fish just aren't committing. Maybe it's not just, they're not feeding good right now. So they're just nipping at it but I cannot catch one of these things. I've hooked them. There's one right there. Oh, I missed it. Maybe they're just side swiping it. Sometimes when the fish really aren't feeding, they'll still hit the bait when they see it, but they don't always inhale it like you want them to. Just nip at it. Maybe that's what's happening. So I've gotten so many bites here. They're hitting it on the fall. On the pop, everything. I just cannot connect, so let's see. I even loosened my drag because I was worried that I was pulling it out of their mouth, but let's see if that makes a difference. I might have to change over to a 1 8 ounce jig head instead of a 1 4th. Sometimes those fish can shake the 1 4th. There's one. Oh my gosh, that's what I'm talking about. There's one right there, but yeah, sometimes those fish can shake the heavier jig heads a little easier. Slow it down, let them look at it for a little bit longer. Maybe they'll bite it harder. I get a better hook set, you never know. We're gonna catch one of these things. All right, y'all, well, first fish, foul hooked a croaker. Hopefully that's not what's out there. Hopefully I don't catch a bunch of those. But does that count? I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comments down below. Does that count as getting the skunk off? Oh, there's a fish. Next cast. Oh, he's off. What am I doing wrong, y'all? Well, paper mouth trout. It has to be. Well, Sandies or something. Or just super dink specs. All right. Finally, we hooked into one, guys. Finally hooked one. It seems like a nice trout right here, y'all. Pull a little bit of drag, shaking his head, staying down. And I did switch up lures. I'm throwing the 1 8. Oh, yeah, that's a good trout. Oh, pulling drag. Is that a trout? Might be bigger than I think it is. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good keeper trout. Midday speckled trout out here. It's a guy croaking. Hook fell out of his mouth just like I thought. He was hooked just barely in the lip. There he is. Let him go. But I switched up to a 1 8 ounce jig head and I put on one of these. I don't remember what they're called. I think this is a mirror lure something, but you know, not a paddle tail, just a little soft plastic. And I wasn't sure if it was going to work because well, it is clear with a little bit of salt and pepper flake in it. So I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but I have got a few bites on it. Finally connected to that one. And yeah, I'd say it worked. That was a good keeper trout. Let's see if we can get some more. Okay, so about two casts later, and I just hooked this croaker, hook him in the mouth, and y'all check this out. He's about the same size as my bait, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use him. I'm just going to put him on this jig head right here. Hook him through the... right like this. And he should get eaten out here. You know, he's not much bigger than my... he's not much bigger than my uh, lure. So we'll see if he'll get eaten by a big old trout. If not... We'll go back to the lure, but let's see.
Guys, the Kroger just got bit, but I missed it. I felt that Kroger start getting nervous, and all of a sudden my rod got yanked down, but I missed it. I was gonna reel him and cast him back out there again. He was way out when he got bit. See the damage on him. The problem we're gonna have hooking these guys is that the hook's not too exposed. I don't see any bite marks, but I know he got bit, so let's cast back out. Super far. It's about right where he was. We'll give him a couple twitches here to get him moving. Just let him swim around. Oh, guys, we got a fish. Oh, this is something big, y'all. Oh, oh, it's a nice trout. So he got hit, and I reeled in. I didn't feel anything. Because I thought it was just a croaker on there. But it turns out that this trout was swimming towards me. We got him. Your hand wet, always get your hand wet before you cut these fish. Jeez, okay. Chill out. Get him out here and unhook him. That's a good one. Better than the last. Man, maybe I should have brought that stringer. Skinny guy, but longer. About 17 inches. Chill out. I guess I actually could go back to the car and get those mullet and they'd probably get eaten too, but there we go. Nice, uh, let's see, about 16 and a half, 17 inch trout there. Get the release on them. Put that lure back on, maybe we'll snag another croaker or we'll hook into one of those guys. All right, once again, about two casts later, there we are. The reason I'm not running the camera right now is because it's almost dead, but there's another trout right here. He's smaller than the other ones. Probably 14. Well, he hit that thing on the fall. And they're feeding out there. Nice midday bite going on. Don't sleep on midday, man. You got the right spot. If there's a little feeding period going on, which there is right now, those fish will be eaten. I just got bit on the fall again. Oh, right out of his mouth. Why did I do that? I was so excited. I was wiping the camera off on my shirt, drying off the lens. I got bit on the pole and I set the hook so hard I held the drag so it didn't pull out. Pulled it right out of the fish's mouth like an idiot. That's right. Seems to have found these fish out here though. They're hanging out right on the edge of the intercoastal. They haven't moved out or they haven't moved up onto this oyster yet. That tide seems to be starting to dump out, but not too hard yet. Let's sink all the way down, see if we can get bit on the fall. There's one. Oh! Man, he smacked it too. Okay, so the GoPro is about to die, you guys. And I hate to do this because I hate to leave fish when they're biting. But when it dies here in the next few minutes, I'm actually going to head back in, throw it on the charger, and take a little break while I get that battery charged back up. So I can come back here and hopefully catch the end of this feed. And whenever I come back, I'm going to bring the live mullet too. So we can see if we can catch something on that. All right, I'm telling you all guys, I think these fish are camera shy out here. Every single time I turn off the camera, I get bit. Every time. A little sand trout this time. It's the opposite of what it usually is. It's usually sand trout with the speck mixed in. Today it was, it's was it been speckled trout. And then right there, a sand trout mixed in with them. Get back out there. See if there's another one. All right, guys, I'm back in the truck right now. Like I said, I'm taking a little break to charge my GoPro. I don't even have the extra battery charged. I didn't even charge the GoPro this morning because I wasn't planning on doing this. I was planning on just doing a little bit of bank fishing for flounder. But when I got down here, all the flounder areas I usually go to were just blowing out super high tides. The tides high everywhere right now. But yeah, so I got the GoPro on the charger. Gonna go get a hamburger real quick and then come back and hopefully those fish are still biting. Whenever I was leaving there, I was getting bit on pretty much every single cast. I wasn't catching all of them, but I was getting bit on pretty much every one. And I caught a few good trout uh, while the camera was off. So. 
We're gonna go get a hamburger, charge GoPro. I'm gonna go back out there. I'm gonna take the mullet with me this time and see if we can catch them on that because that's kind of the point of the video, live mullet. And we'll see what happens. So y'all stay tuned and hopefully we'll be back on the water. It's 420 right now. Hopefully we'll be back by five. All right, little update. Made record time here, about 15 minutes. But let me put you on real quick. The number one, what I think is the best hamburger ever, right here. Look how good that looks. Comes from the old water park over on Bolivar. Uh, I don't know what the name of this little food truck is, but it's a food truck at the old water park. I promise y'all it's the best hamburger. Go out and try that thing. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes. We're back. Hopefully those fish are still biting. And this time I'm taking the live bait with me. I'm still going to throw lures, but I'm also taking all the live bait. Let's get out there, see what happens. Back out. I'm gonna throw this lure again just to see if those fish are still in that same spot. And if they are, then I'm gonna throw out those little finger mold. Just throw them on the jig head, hook them by the tail, or whatever, let them swim around. We're gonna see if we can hook into a big old trout. I've decided I did grab my stringer, put it on me, and I might keep one just because I want to make fish cakes. So I might keep one or two, but that's gonna be it. And only if they're a good size, 17 inches or up. But the water looks a lot better now than it did earlier. So hopefully these fish are going to be out there. And that tide's moving out really well. This is our main tide of movement for the day. About for the next two to three hours, it's going to be pushing like this. So let's see what happens. The current is ripping now perfectly, which is exactly what you want. What that's doing is pushing that bait out of that back lake. And it's hitting up over this oyster. Those fish are waiting up on there to eat them as they come up. So I did try fishing the current, which usually holds a good trout. I made not a lot. I mean, I, I shouldn't say I tried. I made five or six casts in there. But it's only been 30 minutes since I was out here last. So I'm just going to move back out to where I was, fish as I go. Those fish might be a little bit closer, but it's still early in the evening. It's just now 5 o'clock, so it's still pretty hot. They're probably still hanging in that deeper water. We're just going to slowly move out there, see if we can get back on them. See if we can get one right here. Yep, there's one. There they are. It's a little sand trout right there. Not exactly what we're after, but fish now that we're back. It's a good sign. another one on that same cast and he came off too but all right, but all right that's a good sign guys they're out here and they're out here like crazy we just have to hope we get some specs now there's one <laughs> that feels more like a speck uh, or maybe just a bigger sandy water skin if it's a sandy Little guy. Let go. Let's see if we can go back to back cast. Earlier, what it seemed like is that those speckled trout were hanging out a little bit deeper than the specks. I mean, those speckled trout were hanging out a little bit deeper than the sand trout. Like I said, guys, I am fishing the edge of the intercoaster right now. And what you have here is this oyster, and it seems there's one. <laughs> Every cast. And that oyster drops off out here. There's actually a little, I don't want to say a ledge, but you can feel it kind of step down about six, seven inches. I have to throw me a bigger lure at XO. I never throw the down south supermodel. I never throw the supermodel, but maybe try to weed out of these sand trout. Oh, All right, I was back to back cast, so let's go again. Oh, there was another one. There's another one. There it is. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I wanted to go three for three.
Darn. All right, let's put on live mullet, see what happens with that. Okay, so y'all saw the mullet earlier whenever I cast and had them, but just to show you once again, let's try to get us a good live one here. Some of them have died in the bait bucket. They've been there for hours. But just to show y'all, guys, they are tiny like this. This is actually a really small one. They're a little bit bigger than that. But let's tie this guy and see if he'll get bit. Sometimes fishing with live bait is just fun. Lures is a little more sporty, but sometimes live bait is just something different. Let's see what happens. I don't think that should take long. Oh, he already got bit. Wait, I got one. Oh, there we go. Okay, he's running quick sideways. Wait, he's coming straight towards me. What is that? Oh, it's just a little sand trout. Well, that was quick. What was that? All one minute that that mullet was out there. Another one. This is unbelievable, guys. If only we could catch a speckled trout like this. Another little finger mullet. Super fingers mullet sized. We gonna hook. Oh no! All right. Well, gotta give one back every now and then. Let's grab another one. All right. Let's see. Let's see how long it takes. I'm gonna put a timer on the on the uh, GoPro right now. There's a bite. Ah, oh, he's off. Nope, there's a bite. I set it. Set it. Boom, we got him. I don't know how long that is, but it was probably like 20 seconds. Still another sand trap though, darn. Throw these molten until they're gone. If I hook in anything good, I'll show you on the camera. We'll try this thing. A little pinfish, very small one. Should get bit out there for sure. Oh yeah, he's going crazy. See how long that takes. Super lively little dude. See if something weed him. Oh yeah, he just got bit right there. Got nibbled on, he's getting bit. There he is. Did I get him? No. Nope. Missed him. Missed him again, what the heck? Oh, got one. Oh, what is that? Just like, did you let it go? Oh, he goes, he's swimming towards me. No, he still has him. A little sandy again. Oh, broken loud too, and he's off. Cool. I think we are down to our last bait now. Yeah, that's it. This is the last guy, and I think he might be dead. He is. We'll use him anyways. See if we can pull out a big trout. There was a fish, missed him, took the bait. All right, onto the lures. Okay, so we have this down south right here. Supermodel, as you can see, it's pretty big. Throwing it on the 1 8 still. Now let's see if we can pick out some of these speckled trout from in here so we don't have to worry about the sand trout as much. Ooh, 
There was a bite right there. There's another bite. Ah. Time to drag them. Slip and drag on the hook sets. That's his same spot. Alright, there we go, y'all. Hooked up on a speck here. Not big. Not even a keeper, I don't think. Oh, and he's off. Splash the camera and left. What a kind fish. Let's cast back out and try it again. Just sling this thing as far as I can. And they are stacked. I'm getting bites every cast. I think a lot of it is still sand trout. And I think the sand trout are short striking this. Which is a good thing. That means I don't have to unhook them every time. Right back out here, I just got a good bite out here. I was drying off my hands after that last fish and bit it on the fall. Set the hook in immediately, pulled some line. There's one. Oh no, he pulled off. He pulled off. Man, I was working that lure way more aggressively. I feel like a little bit better than that sand trout. Maybe it was a speck. We're gonna work the lure aggressive again and see if that's what they're eating. It's a little one. I think he's shook off. That's good. There's another one. Oh, got a little bit bigger. I'm eating them on these really big pops now versus what I was doing earlier, which is basically just letting it sink in a little bitty pops right at the bottom. Now, getting super aggressive with it. That's where those bites are coming on. Let's see if we can do it again. Boy. Oh my god. Drag slipped. I'm tightening that thing down, not letting it slip again. It's the third time it slipped on a hook set. Oh, there's another bite. Another bite. Is it on? Oh. Gosh, guys. It's crazy right now, man. I don't even know what's going on. It's unbelievable. All I need is a one or two trying to take home to make fish cakes. Sand trout. Y'all, we're on something big here. I think I got me a redfish right here. It's just pulling drag. Oh, yeah, that's a big fish. We have to tighten down just a little bit here. Oh, that might be something super big. I was just casting the same spot I've been casting this whole time. Head shakes. And not a trout, I'll tell you that. Probably a redfish here. Maybe not. It's super slow moving though. I don't even think it's really this one yet. If it's like a redfish here, that would just make my day. Oh my, it's a gaff 
Why could that not have been a big old red fish? He ate it too. Did not hesitate. Go away. All right, cool. Let's cast back out and see if we can get something worth a damn. All right. Still just sand trout out here after that hardhead. We're gonna head in and fish that hole in that current on the way back for a minute or two. So I'm eating in the video as soon as I hooked that trout and I couldn't start back because I didn't have enough time left on the GoPro. But I just caught a nice, it's on the screen right now, but it's about 60 inch trout. So there we go, catch and cook coming at y'all. I'm gonna stay out here, see if I can catch one more. But if not, I'm happy with that. That should make a, you know, four fish cakes at least. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. All right, so just like we wanted, one keeper right there. I know I said one or two, but I had to give up, man. I'll tell you what, my wrist is sore from catching all these fish today. One little keeper right here, about 16 inches. We're going to throw them in the cooler. That's going to be the catch and cook. This thing's going to be turned into fish cakes, like I was, like I was saying. Perfect little 16 inches. So, nothing crazy, but still a good day. Y'all stay tuned. Let's go back to the house, cook this thing up. All right, y'all. So, I'm actually back in the kitchen right now, but I did have a little bit of audio trouble. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick little voiceover right here. Now, like I said earlier, we are making fish cakes. So, I have my speckled trout flays right here. And it's a super simple recipe. It only has like three or four ingredients. So we're gonna go over those in a second, but real quick, the first step is to take your fish and dice it up. So now that that fish is diced up, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you all the ingredients. So right here we have our breadcrumbs. I actually didn't have any, so I went ahead and made my own. Super simple guys, you just make toast and break up in a bag. And then we have an egg right there. That's gonna hold everything together, bind it all together. And then here's our three or four ingredients, which is basically just celery, onion, squeezed garlic, as you can see in the middle, and then of course the diced up fish. Okay, so now that we went over the ingredients, the next thing to do is just to throw them all together in the bowl. So I added in the breadcrumbs, then went ahead, cracked that egg, threw that in there. And then of course some seasoning. I'm just using Cajun seasoning like always, it's whatever you want. And you wanna add a pretty generous amount of that. So now that we have everything in the bowl, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is everyone's favorite, and that is just go ahead and start mixing it around. So make sure you have your hands washed up nice and neat because you're definitely gonna need to use them. And then just start mashing it all together. It's very important you get it mixed nice and evenly so you have that egg covering every single part. And of course, you don't want one fish cake with, you know, just straight onion and celery. We want it to have an even amount of all the ingredients. Now, all there is left to do is to just cook up these beautiful masterpieces. So we're just going to take them, make them into a ball. And this is an important part. You want to squeeze them together so nothing falls apart. And if you're having trouble with this, one of the problems could be that you don't have enough breadcrumbs or that you don't have enough egg. Remember, that is the stuff that is holding this all together. So feel free to add whatever you want at this point. Just figure it out and try to see if you can get them to stay together. But mash it up into a little hamburger sized piece, maybe a little bit smaller. And then just go ahead and throw it in that oil. And you don't have to have a lot of oil, just enough to fry one side because we are going to flip it and go ahead and fry the other. And also, guys, this does not take too long at all. About two to three minutes on each side, and it should have a nice golden brown. Now 
So a couple minutes later and here is the finished product. Now I did go ahead and make a little sauce for mine. It's basically just a tartar sauce, a little bit of mayonnaise, lemon juice, stuff like that. And it goes really great with the fish cakes. All right, so that is it for the recipe and that is it for the video too. As you can see, super simple. All you do is make those fish cakes, make them into little patties, hamburger sized patties, maybe a little bit smaller. Throw them in some oil, enough that it goes up halfway on the fish cake. All it takes is maybe, I don't know, three minutes per side and then they are perfect. So definitely try the recipe out. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're not already. And if you are, thank you guys so much. And like always, that is it for now, but until next time, peace.